the only cure of the loveless heart. The practice of heartfelt devotion to God in relationship to the spiritual master is the true and perfect way of life. It is the path that realises the fundamental understanding that after all your searching comes to an end and even during the entire effort of your seeking and even now in your most profound meditation you are emotionally turned away from the event of existence. You are never in any moment emotionally satisfied. In order to be free of this negative, reactive disposition, you must realise what this gesture of emotional dissociation is altogether. You must become responsible as the heart or the emotional, feeling core of your being. Everything else follows from this practice and everything that is necessary for your existence and your spiritual practice will thus be revealed to you by grace. I have already described to you how the process unravels and I could continue to describe all kinds of practices that become natural and useful in moments here and there in the process and that you will at some point simply assume as a functional discipline. But fundamentally, there is one practice, one basic discipline. Contrary to common presumptions about religious and spiritual life, that practice is not to seek for God. The fundamental practice is to confront and transcend this emotional dissociation right now and in every present moment. It is to surrender to God as the one living personality, the companion of one's heart, and to allow that condition of surrender to be the condition of one's life. Thus, one is no longer life negative or heart negative, but one persists in love moment to moment and is ecstatic. In order to be happy, you must know that you have complete freedom to love and to be ecstatic in every moment. Yet, your whole life has been an emotional refusal of all experience, of God, of relationship, of the radiance of your existence. You have been contracted upon yourself with emotional force and no amount of thinking, considering, experiencing, desiring, exploiting and manipulating yourself in the world can affect that contraction. No awakening of the Kundalini touches it. It has nothing to do with the Kundalini. You can have Kundalini experiences until you are yawning with boredom, yet you will not have touched this emotional recoil at all. You tend to think of yourself in terms of your limitations, your thinking, emotional reactions, bodily sensations and desires. You pursue your religious life as well as your ordinary life while thinking of yourself as an actor or a person defined by those limitations. You have little certainty about anything beyond your thinking consciousness. You feel physical desiring with great certainty, but the idea that there is a consciousness that influences you or that is fundamental to you is relatively alien or at least occasional. You think about God and you feel that someday you will make up your mind about whether or not there is a God, but what do you think you will do differently then? Look at the people who claim to have found God. They do not seem to have changed very much. They were depressed, now they seem gleeful. But are they enlightened, God-conscious, moral, 
compassionate, wise, sane, fearless, and spontaneously happy at all times. You must enter into a presumed association with God as the intimate, heart, heart associate or companion of your life. The creation of relationship with God certainly is a great gesture. It is the only cure of the loveless heart and of the whole life of suffering. In the process, you become quite open to natural association with dimensions of existence that you have not previously taken into account. You begin to recognise that apart from your frantic, self-possessed consciousness in which the mind is not released to God and the brain is not relaxed in the life current, apart from this obsessive thinking pattern of mind that you typically dramatise, there is a great dimension of mind that does not engage in the thought process. Perhaps you also suddenly realise thoughts and intuitions for which you previously have had no sensitivity. When you begin to presume an association with God, observations of the world have new significance for you. Perhaps you were not noticing previously, or perhaps now new and very remarkable things simply do begin to happen. Now you are trying very hard to acquire a dimension of mind and knowledge, even literal practical knowledge, from or with the thinking mind itself. If you can relax your thinking mind into the higher mind, which is prior to thought, higher psychic intuitions and even information will appear in your patterns of thought. A higher understanding will come into consciousness. You will also notice then that your life is changing by virtue of this same heartfelt divine association. Just as you observe changes in your consciousness or mind in which new dimensions appear spontaneously and intuitively, you also notice that your vital physical life, your ordinary life of desiring, is beginning to change too. You become much more effective, more capable of choosing to do something and actually doing it. Many positive, remarkable and interesting things begin to happen to you. Thus, the heart is the primal centre of consideration. Everything that is body and mind is the emanation of the divine, which we identify via the heart principle or life positive emotion. Radiance, love prior to contraction, self-possession and fear. The effects of the gesture of the heart must appear in your mind and body. The body-mind must be transfigured by love, by emotional self-transcendence. Nothing less than this emotional practice is true or sufficient. We are willing to do all kinds of things, even to go into long periods of seclusion and to deprive ourselves of bodily comforts and pleasures, just to experience extraordinary effects in mind and life. We will engage in all kinds of practices, you see, that are self-manipulative. Some of those practices are creative in an ordinary sense, but they are not this practice of the heart. You have not committed yourself to the practice of love or emotional association with God and all existence. You are still committed to emotional dissociation. Emotional dissociation is narcissus, self-possession, the ego. If you would transcend the ego, you must deal with the emotional gesture of the being from moment to moment. Transcendence or disillusion of the ego is entirely an emotional matter. Thus, there is no transcendence of the ego until love appears, until there is self-transcendence via emotional sacrifice of the body-mind to God, the living personality, the all-pervading life current, who is expressed as everything and who absolutely transcends everything. You must choose this sacrifice, this loving gesture. If you will choose it, if you will make this emotional commitment, then all experience becomes divine revelation to the point of ecstasy 
and transcendence of everything in God. You must see God truly. Then you must enter into right association with the spiritual master and into right practice in his company. The mere sighting, the mere association with the body-mind of the spiritual master, even any form of remembrance and association with the spiritual master, is God contemplation. Practice association with me to the true spiritual sense, awakened in your understanding that this body-mind is a murti or image of the all-pervading principle, alive and conscious. If you simply enter into ecstatic association with me, you will always stand in a temple with me where ecstatic speech is understood, where we are all willing and can speak only the truth. The ecstatic relationship to me is the key to practice. Do this heart practice in relation to me with heartfelt attention and use me as the form or sacred image through whom to enter into communion with the personality of God. In this way of God communion, in this way God communion, communion can be realised very simply. All the elaborations of spiritual life follow from this natural devotion, which ultimately includes all of mind and all the mysteries of existence.